Hi everybody, my name is Jake Luchansky and I'm the team lead of the uh, implementations team. So what is SKU Stack? SKU Stack is the, our home and grown warehouse management solution and it's actually even so much more than just that. Basically, what it does, it allows you to uh, manage the inventory within your warehouse. Let's say uh, you have a specific location where you store uh, your products at. Uh, and you want to track the movement within the warehouse, know which product is in which location in real time. You Maybe you want to track your workers' productivity. Maybe um, you want to receive inventory and have it you know, put away in a specific location. Or you want to be able to uh, pick and sort and pack um, for FBA shipments or for order fulfillment and so much more. So basically SKU Stack is a mobile app that we have developed. and. Um, it can be used on any Android device, so that makes it really widely accessible and it can be downloaded by the App Store, Google App Store. It's obviously, since it's homegrown software, it's seamlessly integrated uh, within the Sour Cloud Core functionality, which is actually a pretty big deal because, first of all, we're really listening to our customers and their feedback. And any new features that are being requested, we're really doing our best to you know, implement them as much as possible. Um, which uh, makes it a very um, customizable or flexible in that aspect. Um, it can be tailored to a lot of different types of workflows. Obviously, it's connected real time to Seller Cloud, so any changes you do via the app will be updated in the Seller Cloud instantaneously. You don't, you don't even have to use bins necessarily um, to use uh, SKU stack. So let's say if you're um, selling furniture or maybe you're selling big appliances and you have to wheel them around the warehouse um, and you don't necessarily have a specific location for each of those products, maybe they're mobile um, in, that, in that aspect. Uh, you can still use SKU stack um, for let's say warehouse transfers, warehouse to warehouse transfers and other functions as well. The main difference is that in that case you wouldn't be utilizing the, um, the bin or the location's um, functionality. Um, but you know, most of our clients actually prefer to use that um, because it allows you to really track the movement of each product from, each, from one location to the other location and um, know exactly what quantity you have in each location uh, and so much more. We do even offer a lot of um, reporting and visibility in the admin panel. Um, so you can see how the productivity of your workers within the warehouse. Um, let's say which worker picked X many orders um, within a specified amount of time. Within SKU stack, we, we can actually even track serialized products. Uh, we can also track expirable products. So let's say you're bringing new inventory, you're able to specify whether you're adding it into a new lot code new, with a new expiry date, or you want to bring it into an existing one, and you have a lot of flexibility in this regard. Um, and the way that it works is uh, when you set up the bins, which are the, you know, the locations, you can pretty much have different products within the same bin, or you can have uh, the same product you know, spread across multiple different bins. So any possibility really works um, with SKU stack. Uh, we can even define regions within SKU stack so that uh, let's say if you have a pretty big warehouse, this is pretty, um, pretty convenient if you have, let's say pickers that are dedicated to only a specific, they are only supposed to pick from a specific region. So we can set up regions and associate the bins with each region and this way the pickers can filter. There's a real time connection within, with, with Sour, between Sour Cloud and SKU stack. So once you, adjust the inventory on a product, or you receive it in your warehouse, or you um, do any really interaction with that product, it's instantaneously reflected within Sour Cloud. The way that I'm going to go over this presentation is um, I'm going to glance over the, the, the various modules that we have within the app. The first one that I'm gonna start with is the projects module. Just to give you a brief overview, this is the icon that's currently selected here at the top left. 
And within this product, products module, you're able to search for any existing products. You can actually create new products on the fly. You can update product information like a UPC, serial number, lot expiry code. You can also build pallets, which is very useful if you're uh, picking, let's say, FBA shipments or if you're receiving by the pallet. Um, you know, as a prerequisite, you would be able to create that pallet uh, and associated products uh, with that pallet. So let's start with the product creation. Here in the short um, GIF animation, you'll be able to see what it looks like. So basically within SKUStack, first of all, you can, if you want, you can enforce the scanning. In, in this way, you will reduce any um, opportunity for, um, let's say, a mistake. But we do um, still offer the uh, ability to manually enter information. So if, let's say, for whatever reason, you don't want to um, scan a specific label like a UPC or other type of product barcode, uh, you can still type in that information. It's all based on settings which are configurable, um, very customizable. Uh, so it's really a great user experience. So within here, um, within the products uh, module, you can search for the existing product um, and you can, or you can create a new product. Um, you, you can also do kitting. So let's say if you're selling bundles that are not prepackaged and you have to actually assemble them within your warehouse from your uh, starting components. Uh, this can also be done within SKU stack and you can even uh, create work orders, but I'll, I'll go into that a little bit later, uh, where you can essentially give instructions to your warehouse workers as to how they um, need to uh, do all that, which makes it really easier for them. So in here in the short clip, I'm just showing you how to view all the, find all the product information here. You see all these uh, nice tabs. You have the lot expiries. You have custom columns is where it's very useful where you can um, add additional information at the product level. Um, you can uh, set up case package. Um, we have the kidding module. We have warehouse images, product notes, serials, alias. This is uh, sort of like an alternative SKU. Uh, you can even print various different types of labels, product labels, as we'll see later, FBA labels, and so much more. Uh, you can even manage product replacements. From here, you can see if a product has a specific shadow, and you can also set up weights and dimensions on the products as well. So here on the next slide, I'm showing you how the, how the serial number tracking works. Basically, at the product level, we can specify whether a specific SKU requires serial number uh, tracking. So this way, um, SKU stack forces the user to scan the serial whenever you're making any transaction. So this way it doesn't get lost, right? So you're doing SKU to SKU transfers or warehouse transfers, or you're adjusting inventory. Um, if, this is, uh, if this setting is enabled on the product, it will be required. So this way you'll know exactly where each zero is located within your warehouse. So with the, the way that it works with expiration dates, currently I believe it only works with uh, the BIN-enabled warehouses, meaning with, uh, with BINs. Um, and again, we're able to store inventory, associate inventory with a unique expiry, uh, lot code with expiry date. Um, and you can have multiple lot codes for the same product which can be located within you know, the same bin or even across different bins. All sorts of combinations are um, possible here. And when you're receiving new inventory, you have the ability to say which lot code you're receiving it into. If you're doing an adjustment, you need to specify which bin and which lot number you are you know, selecting. Um, so that this way, we always know uh, what inventory is associated with each lot expiry of which product. So on this slide, you can see how a pallet is built from the products module. It's very simple. In just a few clicks, you're able to build a pallet, which is a good prerequisite uh, for, let's say, if you're doing the pallet picking or if you're receiving. Um, there's also the uh, ability to create a pallet when you're receiving so that you can easily put away that inventory. So now we're going to move to the next uh, module, the BINs module, and some of the actions that we saw previously in the uh, products module are also available in the BINs module. Uh, for example, you can see the 
um, the, the inventory movements, like the history of you know, how the inventory changed on a product. Um, you can see any lot codes, etc. cetera. Mm, you can also do adjustments. So you can adjust the inventory of a product uh, on the fly. And uh, you can transfer inventory between from one bin to another. You can um, uh, create new bins. You can also print labels for the bins that you can sticker as you're creating the, uh, the bins. Um, you can perform bin cycle counts. So let's say if you have um, an audit once a year or twice a year, uh, if you have the correct inventory in a specific location or more than one location within your warehouse, then you can perform a bin cycle count, which gives you a report showing you um, what is your current inventory based on what the system thinks you have versus what you just counted. And uh, then you're able to commit to that cycle count, which will essentially reconcile the inventory in your uh, bins. We also do uh, offer a nice feature called the restock bins report. So within SKU stack, um, the normal, normal types of bins uh, where you would stock your inventory could be broadly differentiated into primary bins and secondary bins. And the difference is usually you would pick from the primary bins. So the secondary bins are kind of like overstock, overflow, the um, more difficult to reach locations within the warehouse where maybe you need a forklift um, or you just don't wanna pick out of them uh, right away. So you can assign a bin to be either a primary or a secondary as you're creating the bins. And then uh, this report actually gives you um, it's a really nice feature because it tells you which primary bins you need to restock from your secondary bins so that you never run out of stocking your primary bins, which would, you know, halt your normal picking operations. The slide here that I just briefly mentioned, this is how to create a new bin, and here you can assign it a primary, sellable or unsellable. This controls whether or not we push that inventory to the channels, the inventory within that bin. So if the bin is unsellable, it's not going to be included in the inventory push to the channels. Um, and here you can assign a region as well, if you have previously already created that region. We have the manage regions module over here, and you can of course assign the weights and dimensions. You're also even able to set up um, uh, I like a capacity uh, of the bin. This is just for your information. It's not going to prevent you from adding more or less uh, units within that bin, but it's a nice um, piece of information for your own reference. So this slide here shows you how you can view the bin movements. Um, and there are different types of movements. So when you receive a purchase order, when you do an adjustment, um, all those different types of... Uh, uh, inventory transactions, uh, they have a specific type, which is denoted over here. And you can see the date when the um, movement happened, which bin it happened to, and what the quantity. And now this is the restock bins feature, where you can search for the, the bin, and you can create a restock list. The bin cycle kind of already briefly explained. Um, like I mentioned, first you, uh, before you actually commit, it gives you a report that's showing the difference between what you actually have versus what you just counted. I mean, what, what the system knows you, thinks uh, you had versus what you just counted at the warehouse. And now you can commit to the changes. So now we're moving on to the next big, big module over here, the pick list. There are different types of, um, different modes of picking basically depending on, um, let's say, whether or not you're doing a lot of large waves where you're, you, most of your orders are um, single SKU orders, or maybe you actually do a lot of wholesale or you just uh, have orders with a lot of SKUs on them. So depending on that, you know, we have different modes of picking. One is called product-based, which is more, um, which is better for the larger waves. And, you are doing, uh, and if you're doing a lot of um, multi skew orders, uh, we offer the order-based picking functionality as well. Of course, in reality, um, a lot of clients have both. The way that it works is when you have an order that comes from the channels, or you create a new order within Cellar called manually, 
um, we can create what we call safe views based on any criteria that we want to filter, right? So maybe you want to filter by specific channel, by specific products, uh, maybe you want to filter single SKU orders, or maybe you want to filter for um, multi-SKU multi orders. And this save view, once you create it, um, you can either manually or we can even automate this whole process of generating the pick list. And it can happen on a scheduler or on the fly if you just want to create it manually for a few orders. Um, and then you can, if you do it automatically, this is very nice because it generates a PDF uh, of the pick list, uh, which has all the products. If you're doing the order based picking, it will have the order numbers that you can send to your pickers at the warehouse. And uh, so when they're doing the picking, they're actually able to even filter by the region uh, so that each picker can only pick from their designated region. We also do have the kitting module, as I previously mentioned, where you're able to pick the components of your kits and assemble them on the fly. So the pick to light is very, it's a relatively new feature that um, it's very useful for sorting large orders with multiple SKUs. So it happens sim simultaneously as you're picking the, the items, uh, you're able to sort them for each order. And this works uh, very well with uh, SKU blocks, which is another um, nice product that we have developed in-house. Uh, so imagine you have this mobile cart or even a wall. Um, if you're not very familiar with what SKU, SKU blocks does, but it's seamlessly integrated with SKU stack. So as you're picking, basically um, the, the location on the mobile cart or the wall will light up and tell you which bin or which uh, slot you actually need to put the uh, items. Uh, so imagine each slot is in order and you need to put in three or five or 10 items and you don't have to figure out um, this on your own. The app just tells you what slot to put it in. This is the product-based picking where you have a list of all the products, all the SKUs that you need to pick and their quantities. And this is why it's more useful for larger waves. Um, and here it tells you the quantity that you have picked, and this is the required quantity on the right. And you can obviously select the bin uh, that you're picking from. Um, you, you have so many options in terms of the scanning. If you're enforced the product scanning, you can scan it uh, item by item, or you're able to also scan the product once and then say how many units you scanned. So it really depends on your workflow and what works best for the pickers uh, in the warehouse. Yep, so this is the order-based picking, and the nice thing about it, you can actually also print a label for the order once you're done with it. So then you can scan that uh, license number uh, later on if you're using, let's say, ShipBridge or you know, when you're shipping. So this is the kits um, module. Um, so in here, you can just uh, do the kitting. So you have the components queues, and from them, from there, uh, from them, you're building the the kit essentially. Um, and this is the pick to light feature. Um, in here, if you have more more than one um, mobile cart or wall, then you can select which one uh, you want to look at. So the next module that I would like to um, talk with you about is the fulfillment module. Within here, uh, this is mostly related to FBA and WFS. So if you are doing FBA and or WFS, then uh, this really helps you streamline your process. So even if you're not, not doing any um, uh, merchant fulfilled orders, if you're just FBA and WFS, then this is, you can still find a lot of functionality within uh, SKU stack. Um, so within this fulfillment module, you can manage and pick FBA inbound shipments. You can prep the products and print labels. Um, you can uh, set up the box content, print box labels, and you can also receive removals back into your air warehouse once you receive those from FBA. So here you can see, so once an FBA shipment is created within Seller Cloud, 
you don't actually need, to, uh, there is no additional step to create the pick list. It's automatically created, so you can just uh, open it up here. You can search by the Amazon shipment ID, by the server cloud shipment ID, uh, you know, or if you're not sure, maybe you can just search all. So here, on the FBA, in the, within the FBA prep tool, you're able to uh, scan the product, UPC, and then print the, the FBA labels for those products that you can just stick around the, on the boxes. And then within the manage box content, you can set up the dimensions, add, update, remove um, the boxes, and uh, allocate products to each um, box, and then print the labels for those. And then the FBA removals, I think it's straightforward. This is where you would receive that uh, inventory that Amazon sent back to you as a removal order. So now, I would like to bring your attention to the receivings module. So any new inventory that you're receiving within your warehouse, this is where, you, this is where the action happens. So whether or not you're receiving by the shipping container or individual purchase orders, we cover all of that. Um, you know, on, on a shipping container, you maybe have more than one purchase order. Uh, and uh, also in here, if let's say you have um, an RMA for an order, then you can receive that inventory. And you can receive it within, let's say, in an unsellable bin. Some clients even have un specific designated warehouses for the, AB, for the, sorry, for the RMAs in case they want to inspect the condition of the items that are being returned before they become sellable. And we also have a really, really nice new feature called Receive to Light. And this is uh, super helpful for um, cross-docking. So when you're receiving the PO, if you don't want to unpack it and receive it on the bins, you're just you know cross-docking. So I'm going to go into a little more detail within each one. So here in the receiving, um, you can receive individual purchase orders. And uh, once you select the purchase order that you first need to create or import into Seller Cloud, then you're able to scan and go through all the items within this purchase order so you don't have to receive it all at once. It can be received in many sessions if need be. Um, and you will be able to update the status of that purchase order within SKU stack. And obviously, you would, uh, before I move on to the next step, I should mention that there is different ways that you can receive inventory within uh, SKU stack. So whether you receive it directly into the final bin locations or maybe you want to do a work order in case you're doing grading, um, product grading, uh, or, you know, in that case, you can create a work order and from then, from there, do a um, put away list. Uh, or you can just create a put away list, uh, which is essentially a virtual bin that has, that temporarily stores all your items that are being received. And you can put them away whenever you're ready at the final bin. So you would scan the bin and you scan the product. And this way, the system knows which item you're putting away in which bin. As I mentioned, we also support shipping containers. And within the shipping container, as you can see, we have all these products that are showing up in their quantities, respective. I should have mentioned previously that um, we, as we receive, we can also uh, unreceive. And it's the same with the picking, by the way. If you pick something by mistake, it's also possible to unpick. And as far as the RMAs, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, you would need to select the, the bins you're receiving into and the quantity, and then just, just a few clicks. So now, um, the receive to light. This is for automatic cross-docking, um, or also bin to light. This is going to be the new name, actually. Um, so you would receive the purchase order and you would, it will be uh, ready to, th that inventory will be ready to pick for that order. Um, so basically when you have an order that you don't have stock for, you can create a 
purchase order for that. And once you receive the inventory on that purchase order, you, you, it will just be available to pick for that order with this functionality. Um, so within SKU stack, we can also do all sorts of inventory transfers between bins, between SKUs, between warehouses. Uh, I should mention though that you, know, you can only be logged into one warehouse at a time. So if you have multiple warehouses, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you're logged into the correct warehouse. And from that point onwards, everything is very streamlined. So within the transfers module, we can do put away lists, warehouse to warehouse transfers, one way transfers, um, SKU to SKU transfers, uh, and as I mentioned, if you have serialized products or load expiries, they are transferred over with the inventory. Uh, the one-way transfers are particularly useful in case you wanna bring in inventory from somewhere or remove inventory from somewhere from, from a location, let's say if you have some damaged items. And by the way, we can also flag products. Uh, so if you find a product within your warehouse that has damaged, you can flag it for the attention of the warehouse workers. Um, and you can even make that inventory unsellable. So this way, um, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can handle that. So in here, you can see how the put away list works. You have to select the original and the interim warehouse, and then you can put those items away. We can also build warehouse transfers and pick them, and then you will be able to log into the receiving warehouse and receive it there. Um, already glanced over the uh, one-way transfers, and the SKU, the SKU transfers, this is where you wanna, let's say, reconcile the inventory for um, more than one SKU that you have. Uh, or if you're uh, doing some grading, then you can transfer the inventory from one, one SKU to the other SKU, which will also, there are different settings, um, depending on how you want this to work, but it can transfer the cost or, you know, all that. But this is actually um, handled in the core and the work orders module. So within this work orders module, you can create all sorts of work orders. So let's say if you're receiving a purchase order and then you wanna either grade the products um, or it maybe you wanna do a kit assembly, which will provide instructions for your warehouse workers on how to build those kits. Or if you're um, doing FBA shipments or WFS shipments, you can prep those. The grading and repair work orders uh, is the latest addition uh, to this module and it's really, really handy. That's pretty much it. Thank you.